you first started doing more engineering type stuff with uh, Arduino boards at Punch Through Design, which mm -hmm. is an SF engineering firm. What are, just from your memory there, what are some cool things you built there? So the thing is, I, I went to advertising school and I just like a vocational studies a year. And I realized there that I didn't care much for advertising, but I thought it was really fun to build stuff and program. So like I just completely focused on that. And there I built my first hardware project or like electronics project, which was this uh, iPhone case with retractable guitar strings. Yeah. So basically I imagined that you could like pull out guitar strings from the bottom of your iPhone and you could pluck it to your belt and then you could hold a cord on the screen. Mm -hmm. And I built that together with my friend Jonathan. And I was like, oh, this is dope. I thought it was so much fun. And I considered like, oh, should I go to school for this? But then I thought, hmm, maybe I can get a job and I could get paid to learn about electronics. So just based off of that one project, I got the job at Punch Through Design, which actually was a was one-year internship. Can you explain what we're talking about here? So it's a case mm -hmm. with guitar strings attached yeah. to it. Does it actually work at all? It does. These are not on the screen guitar strings. No. They're so they're actual strings that you pull out. So there's a mechanism that's almost like a seatbelt mechanism. And yeah, you pull them out from the bottom of uh, your phone and you can attach them to your belt. I mean, it's terrible. It okay. There's a few different ways to decide if somebody's touching a guitar string. Mm -hmm. And what you do in a real guitar is you have the little, it's like measuring the vibration or the change in the... As, as the, yeah, you're measuring how the guitar is vibrating. And you can't really do that because I can't have a, a, a receiving sensor because the guitar strings are going to move in relationship to that because you don't have like a rigid neck. And this is like, yeah, this was my first electronics project. I was a little fledging baby maker. But what I decided was to use capacitive touch because that is independent on if the guitar strings are moving in relationship to something or in relation to something. So basically, there was just this little Bluetooth Arduino board that this company, Punch Through Design, made. So that was how I found them. And I measured the capacitive touch. So like whenever um, the guitar string was measured, there was this little microcontroller that was like, oh my god, a guitar string got measured or touched. And then that sent a signal over Bluetooth to my phone, and I'd built a little iPhone app that interpreted those Bluetooth signals and then checked what type of cord I was holding on the screen and then played the coherent right, So sound. you're holding the cords on the screen. screen so you're doing the multi-touch sensing there. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. I honestly cannot believe that I pulled it off because I, I think I was, I was, ignorance was definitely bliss. Because that was like, yeah, the first hardware project I'd ever built, the first iPhone app I'd ever programmed. And like now, if somebody was like, hey, I want this to be my first project, I would probably be like, oh, that's a lot. But I well, pulled can, it off. Because that's, a, that's such an interesting thing for people to hear because it's your first project. And a lot mm -hmm. of people stop because of the difficulty of their first project. They never truly discovered their own genius because they stopped at the first and you didn't stop. So it'd be interesting to kind of psychoanalyze you on the couch of why you didn't stop. Because you have to build an app you yeah. have to figure out how to, did you know how to program much or no? no? Okay. I mean, a little bit, but I never programmed in, or done any iOS apps. Okay, so you have to figure out how to get, forget like what the app does, just get the app running and working. Mm -hmm. And then you have to figure out how to get the sensors in like real time, the finger touching. And you have to connect how to get the, cap the capacitor touch working with the microcontrollers. Mm -hmm. Do you know anything about the ca capacitor touch sensors at no. that time? I mean, it's pretty easy um, yeah. now. It's basically- Everything just, is easy. Yeah. You know, rockets are pretty easy. Hey. You sound like my grandma. She's I have an Italian grandma. <laughs> and uh, I'm always trying to get her, we're like trying to get her to tell her recipes and yeah. every recipe starts with it's very simple yeah and then there's like 45 minutes of her explaining it yeah. it's like with gymnastics at the olympics they make it look easy the best people in the world always make the the, the impossible seem easy i pride myself with making buildings so look really hard because <laughs> i feel like i'm always struggling so much <laughs> you make the easy seem impossible <laughs> yeah. no uh but, so how many strings was it 
<laughs> is it just one? Oh, gosh. I mean, this is such a long time ago. No, it was six. Oh, six strings, and you can yeah. touch it, and then there's, wow. And it can, and then the, the phone itself makes a sound? Uh-huh. And I wow. still I still think it's such a cool concept to have this, like, mobile. I don't know, I'm not even a guitar player. I don't know. I was, I mean, I got the idea because I was uh, kind of strumming on my charge cord of my phone. Oh, like an air guitar, but on a cord? Yeah. But I, I've been thinking about it because I'm like, oh, man, it would be really fun to go back to that project with what I know now. But the problem with it is that when you're producing the tension in your string just with your arm, like, you can't make it taut enough to actually play. Like, yeah. it kind of becomes playing these, like, saggy strings. Yep. So it's you're not really getting that experience. And I think that's why, I mean, I... Yeah, I haven't really pursued it. I wonder it. if there's a way to generate the tightness from the case itself. It's like a device that unfolds and then with some kind of tightening mechanisms tightens. Yeah, but then it kind of becomes this like whole thing in a guitar. Yeah. Then it just becomes a really shitty guitar. Yeah. Like, which this is a really shitty guitar, but it's also But it's not a so shitty, it's awesome. Yeah, I don't know. Um, but it's a cool. it's cool that you have an interface between a device that's capable of incredible computational power mm -hmm. and an actual hardware thing. Mm -hmm. Is there something that you can psychoanalyze that made you finish that others could hear in, in their own struggle to uh, do their first project like that? Because you were not, you were a non-engineering person technically, and you did a pretty cool renegade out there, wild, no instructions engineering project no it definitely was an off-road build where it's like if you're building a lego kit it's very much on the road and you're following instructions and this is like you have no idea if you're headed for a cliff or a dead end or you're going to get stuck um i think it had a natural pressure to it because it was a school project yeah so it did have deadlines built into it and and stuff like that so that definitely helped but i think also it was just so so incredibly motivating when I realized that I might be able to pull it off. Yeah. Like that was, I, I felt like a bloodhound, you know, <laughs> you're just like, oh my God, I can actually make this happen. And I think if I hadn't seen that at the horizon, it would have been harder to stick through. Were you able to see the end of the tunnel um, pretty early on? No, not really. <laughs> I mean, I feel like so there's something to just suffering for a while. I don't know how, how your brain works, but it's like if I have a problem, I can't stop thinking about it. Like it's so fun to think about it. Like I spent I spent two and a half years designing a coat hanger. And I just can't stop thinking about it. Like I get so into it because I think it's so much fun. Take me to this two-year journey of the coat hanger. Of <laughs> the coat hanger. What? <laughs> like, how did it begin? How did it begin? It began with a corner in my home where I couldn't fit a coat rack. The thing is, I shouldn't have brought this up because I'm going to release it as a product probably in a year. Oh, an actual product. Mm -hmm. Okay. So well, that's, that's leave it as a mystery. It's a mystery. Yeah. But it's, it if... solves a fundamental problem in, in the human yes! condition. And I am so so excited about it and i cannot i don't the, yeah but this is i get so mm -hmm. pumped about it because i see it's just this issue or like this problem that i want to solve and i i kind of can't put it to rest until i have